Welcome to Municipal Affairs. I am your host, Christopher Brown. In this episode, we turn our attention to the recent call from the City of Lloyd Minster straddling the provinces of Alberta and Saskatchewan regarding the impending increase to the federal carbon tax. In a bold move, Lloyd Minster City Council has urged Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's Liberal government to halt any further escalation of the carbon tax. Scheduled to take effect on April 1st, 2024, the proposed increase would see the price of carbon rise from $65 to $80 per per ton, with a subsequent yearly increase until 2030, reaching a total of $170 per ton that year. Lloydminster Mayor Gerald Albers, spearheading this initiative, emphasized the critical need for municipalities to have adequate time to evaluate the impact of such increase on local service provisions. With municipalities at the forefront of service delivery, the implications of rising carbon taxes extend far beyond environmental concerns, affecting essential services that communities rely on daily. Now, to shed light on this pressing issue, we are privileged to have Mayor Gerald Albers of Lloydminster join us as a guest today. The mayor will provide insights into the rationale behind Lloydminster's call for the pause on the carbon tax escalation and the potential implications for municipalities grappling with these fiscal challenges. But as a bit of background, we have listeners and viewers from around the globe. The carbon tax, initially implemented by the Liberal government at $20 per ton in 2019, has gradually increased and now encompasses several provinces and territories, including Alberta and Saskatchewan. The provinces of BC, Quebec, and the Northwest Territories, though, have their own price on carbon, so the federal increase to the carbon tax will not affect those provinces and jurisdictions. So join us as we delve into how the April 1st increase will impact municipalities by gaining valuable perspectives from Mayor Gerald Albers. This is Municipal Affairs. Mayor Albers, thank you so much for doing this. I want to start by the uh, call from the city of Lloydminster to Justin Prime, uh, Justin Prime Minister Justin Trudeau regarding the pause on the April 1st carbon tax. Where did this come from? Because if you are the first municipality, as I said in the pre-introduction, uh, that I have seen come out and call on the Prime Minister to pause the April 1st carbon tax increase. Why why is this important to the city of Lloydminster? Well, first of all, this has been, as every Canadian and uh, municipality, been discussing this for some time, the impacts. We deal with budgets on an annual basis since the introduction of the carbon tax. Let's take, uh, I'll take you back. I wasn't at that table exactly, but I've heard about it, that when the carbon tax was being proposed by the federal government, they uh, discussed and talk, uh, indicated there would be rebates for municipalities, universities, schools, and hospitals, all public institutions uh, in various forms, some responsible at the municipal level, provincial or federal level. And, uh, you know, this is, uh, we've still been waiting for that. So that's been an ongoing discussion around our council table. And I know other council is that I've chatted with mayors and uh, Reeves, this has been a discussion item. We have heard just recently and it's it's just not recently but more it's certainly increased really recently with with things uh, the economy continuing to rebuild but again the added pressures and uh, the pressures of inflation and some people have drawn the line from carbon tax to inflation and uh, others haven't but a lot of have and said you know if carbon tax because in our community we're agriculture oil and gas we've got some industry we've got commerce, uh, commercial and uh, uh, services, and everyone is dependent on energy, no matter where you turn. And that energy, sometimes in the case of the rural neighbors, eight to 10 times carbon tax is paid before the seed even hits the ground or as the seed is hitting the ground uh, because of inputs and costs of moving. That just carries through the chain and then it ends up at our grocery stores because uh, uh, you know the, the food is produced but it's also gotta be processed, transported. And that's just what I've heard from so many people. Everything that we touch 
involves transportation, which is involving carbon tax. So that is one of the roots of that. Um, you know, council has heard it from people. You know, we we had uh, we had a budget increase in last year's budget. That's effective ja uh, January budget, and we'll be sending out tax notices and finishing that off here very shortly. It, it's one of the challenges we face because the utilities we use at the city and our costs of fuel and all those things have gone up. Our supplies, we're, we're doing some capital work, capital construction. We're seeing that and we're hearing it's it just keeps passing through. The Construction Association can, I believe they're at 15% increase from last year overall. And that's gotta have some effects of, because that's concrete, that's steel, those are pipes, that's heavy equipment, yellow iron working, all those items play into it. So um, council felt that this was the time uh, we need to ask. Again, we are at the the, uh, the, well, the bottom stage of the levels of government, right? Uh, you know, we deal basically with two provincial governments in our city on a regular basis, but have some communication to the federal government and certainly wanted to speak out on behalf of our residents and our community. So there's a few things I want to unpack there. And I want to start by asking this sort of simple but very intricate question. You, you talk about that rebate, and I've got to ask the question, do you know the exact number that the city is paying this year alone in carbon tax prior to this increase? Let's let's take out the potential increase. Let's just say because you went through your budget process already, yeah. you have you're going to be sending out your tax notices. Do you have an idea of how much the city of Lloydminster would be paying in the carbon tax? And then I can ask the follow up question, which is how much of that would be savings for the residents on their property taxes? That's a great question. And my response to this, Chris, is what I often use is, can anybody tell me what they paid exactly in income tax and taxes to the federal government last year or the respective provincial government? Yet my residents and neighbors and a former boss of mine pointed it out as I got into this political business, I know exactly how much I write one large check to the city of Lloydminster every year. He says, that's the largest check I write in a year, even though, and uh, my response was, so how much income tax do you pay, Derek? And he Kind of looked at me says i don't know and but you're absolutely right so we don't have that number and part of that problem with that chris is we can go back to our utility bills and our fuel bills well, those are those are those direct energy costs that we know that uh, the carbon tax affects but it's all the other pieces so every supply that we bought from cases of toilet paper to floor cleaner to window cleaner to parts to repair equipment to repair facilities new pipe that's going in the ground for water and sewer manhole covers fire hydrants and again uh, what's been built into that new fire truck that was ordered to the new dozer that's going to the landfill and all the vehicle replacements so those are the hard that's the hard to wrap our head around that number it's just it's impossible but I and I'm going to draw that line the inflation factor there's there's a huge factor to that to piece of that inflation i've seen some economic reports and i disagree i'm no economist but to tell me it's a less than 0.5 percent of uh, inflation is uh, carbon tax i've got to argue that a little bit personally so what are you hoping from this uh, call from the federal government because prime minister justin trudeau you made the call on i believe it was wednesday uh, march 25th uh we're recording this uh two days after the call went out uh prime minister justin trudeau came out yesterday and said give us another or give us he asked the premiers to come to the table with a solution to address the carbon pricing uh is there a solution because i speak to many of your municipal leaders in lloydminster and i often often hear the saying, if you have a problem, come to me with a solution. Is the pause just the solution that you're looking for in the short term? Until for the short term. Better to, yeah. For the short term. Uh, you know, the, the the carbon discussion is a is a that's a whole separate discussion yeah. and no i'm not again uh, worldly enough to enter into it but i've read enough on both sides that i still have a lot of questions and no answers from that perspective one of the things that where this is the reality that hits the road for me we live in the northern hemisphere we live in a community located in the prairies we saw an un a normal winter this winter, but I grew up on the prairies, not far, a little ways from here. Uh, I've seen minus 40 in this time of year, and I've seen plus on the plus side. We need heat. We have a distance to travel. We send our produce to 
all over the world to feed the world from this community and surrounding area. We also produce energy that is used throughout North America. The asphalt comes out of this community by the train load, the semi load, and that's the, the streets that anybody drives on in Toronto. Yeah, you see interstate asphalt uh, rail cars going out into the U.S. regularly and others. So the carbon factor is part of life here. We also have a great carbon sink in our zero-till farming that's going on in the forestry and the, the grazing lands of the cattle operations and that from that perspective. So it, it doesn't, it's a tough sell here to tell people that you're going to be able to reduce your carbon footprint and by taxing it, it's just that much more. And back to specifically to the municipality, our taxpayers are paying it on their homes, their, their, their gasoline, their other purchases. And then on top of it, that you ask that question, what's it do to the municipal? It certainly didn't help because that inflationary factor that I referred to earlier pushes up the cost of operation. At a it doesn't matter which facility we operate and the services we provide, it doesn't cost any less to run the snow plow trucks uh, if they're plowing or we're, we're doing a full snow removal. That's those those costs are direct. And that's that's the piece. So we're asking the government, the federal government today to, for that pause. We walk a very interesting line. We've had that discussion around the council table administration. We also rely on federal government funding. And I realize that you can't always bite the hand of feature because it doesn't always come back. So why with the pause? That's that we felt that was the politically the political statement that we had to make from our council to to send to the federal government. Let's take a look at this and just put the brakes on for this one. People are hoping that the economy will continue to rebound, but those challenges by adding the carbon tax on April first will just be a further drag on the economy and on people's checkbooks. Now we are a few days away from April first, from when we're recording this. Um, I, I I would assume that you've had conversations with MP Shannon Stubbs and MP Rosemary Falk around this issue. Do they give you any sense? And I, I kind of know what the answer is going to be, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Do you get any sense that they are bringing this message to Ottawa, and hopefully Justin Trudeau will hear it, or are you screaming into a void in some sense? Well, I think they are bringing that message and that's their responsibility and their jobs to represent the view of their constituents. And uh, I know that's a wide variety of people and usually around that 100,000 mark for our MPs. But I believe they are carrying that message forward. I, I've just caught a little bit of news uh, here that I both Premier Mo and Premier Smith will be bringing those concerns f to the national table, uh, to a committee. I believe it's the Finance Committee, which gives me some hope that some people will ask that question because the, the, the challenge is, and you know, I've got to be careful because I'm in the tax business as people remind me, we, that's what pays the bills around here and through property tax. And the challenge is that we have this conversation at our level and I have this on a daily basis with businesses and homeowners. Well, you continuously raise taxes and the challenge we have is you can, you know, as residents, we usually continuously ask for more services or improve the services or maintain the services. Very seldom do I get that compliment. Could you please stop uh, plowing snow off the streets? And would you please not uh, ensure that the recreation facilities, the grass can be two feet tall. It's okay, the kids can play in that. We come to a level of service and there's that relationship of who pays for it. Uh, you know, I often remind people, we are the one level of government that balances budgets annually. It is in the form of a tax increase, but at least you know you're not putting burden uh, directly uh, from that perspective, we, it's a balanced budget. It may have loans taken out or borrowing for capital projects, but we're not borrowing to operate. That is, a, that is a level playing field and we try to keep our capital as close to level as we can, other than like I say, major projects. So how, this is, this is the fine line that we walk as municipal leaders uh, throughout the country, it doesn't matter which province or territory you're in. They often say strength is in numbers. You you spoke earlier on about how you're having conversations with mayors and Reeves around Lloyd Minster, whether it be in Saskatchewan or Alberta as the border city. Are you getting the support that you're looking for from your fellow mayors and councillors from across Northwestern, Northeastern, Alberta and Saskatchewan? I think that the, our action was likely the first, and I know the timing, right? And maybe always uh, timing is always critical. And I think that there's a lot of uh, feeling that feeling that we've 
presented is out there? Will it actually come to light? I think there's also some, uh, as we talked about, the realization is the Prime Minister and the Government of Canada listening to the City of Lloydminster. They're going to listen to the Mayor and statement made by Council when they listen to an RM, I mean, a, a county or an MD or a town or village. But I guess it's the important step of making that, that, that declaration and making that statement, presenting it. I think that there's a lot of feeling out there supporting it, but I guess there's also that concern, and I don't want to be well blunt, they haven't heard us so far. Why what would we change their mind now? And you know, it's an ongoing discussion. So the carbon tax is expected to raise fifteen dollars per ton and fifteen dollars per ton next year as well. Um, we are cutting it close to this April 1st deadline. I'm assuming this conversation doesn't stop if they do not pause. It's just you're going to potentially get out sooner for next year if there is no uh, election. Or are you looking at potentially even taking this message to Ottawa and having that knock on the prime minister's door a little bit and get this message across? Because I know you guys are in that sort of election year as well in Lloydminster. There's there's no question there's going to be, I think this will be a discussion coming up at the SUMA convention in Regina here in a couple of weeks from that perspective, because every, as I meet with, uh, like I say, fellow leaders from towns and villages uh, and other cities and northern communities, they're feeling the pressure. This is just, well, there's just no, where's the money going to come from, from that perspective, uh, that that piece. Then we'll be meeting with Alberta in September at the, the Alberta Munis Convention. No question. It's likely going to be a discussion as we go to the, the out to talk to people for the November election as a municipality here. Uh, as all of Saskatchewan will be, it'll be in the Saskatchewan provincial election. It's already, uh, it's discussed quite regularly in the Legislative Assembly in Saskatchewan. What's the answer? I think that we the 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 volume is only going to get louder, uh, you know, from that perspective, and we'll continue to voice those opinions that we hear from our residents because I've heard it over and over again, and I wish I could do something about it, but I can't. That's that's the hardest part of uh, hands on, but by at least sharing those opinions and uh, connecting them and bringing it forward. I think that's the, the least we can do. We have, we owe that to our, our, our residents, our constituents mm -hmm. from that perspective to share their voice with those. And it's also going to come up at FCM in Calgary. You know, there's, uh, you know, Calgary is an interesting place when you realize it's the capital of, uh, or the, the, or the oil patch capital of Canada, as they refer to it from my former days in that industry. But uh, you've got mixed messages you've seen from Calgary, and uh, we're going to be gathering there, and there'll be national leaders there. And, you know, it's uh, a lot of people have a hard time sometimes with oil and gas, but by gosh, it sure paves nice roads and builds uh, nice playgrounds and, and pays some great salaries to people that pay taxes in my community and others. So I know for a fact that I have municipal leaders, uh, sorry, people in the federal government who listen to this show when we put it out because we see our algorithms and we see where our listeners are coming from. And the majority of them are coming from Ottawa. Now, I'm not saying that Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, but there might be someone staffer or someone listening in Ottawa who might have the ear to the Prime Minister. What would you want him to know? If you could speak to Prime Minister Justin Trudeau right now, before I let you go, what would you want him to know? I'd share with the Prime Minister the challenge that, that exists in our community and throughout that I've seen in Western Canada in particular, and I think it's across Canada, the challenges that people are facing each and every day from buying groceries to paying their mortgages to paying their utility bills and helping their kids be able to get off to school with everything they need in a day. And I would say that the cost of inflation and carbon tax have had significant impacts on Canadians across the board. And I would ask them to pause the carbon tax increase because it's not, we're not winning the battle of putting more money in people's pockets. And I don't, uh, I don't want to start a national debate about the carbon tax rebate check, but based on what people are spending each and every day and they're feeling it, they don't feel and they're not seeing the carbon tax rebate check cover that that carbon tax and let alone an increase. And I don't know if that means there's going to be an increase. Maybe the Prime Minister will answer that question. That would be a separate question. But really, we ask you to take a pause. Let Canadians be heard truly, not just in the House of Commons, but everyday Canadians through themselves and through municipal leaders and provincial leaders. 
Mayor Alberts, thank you so much for doing this. Always a pleasure to sit down and chatting with you, and I'm looking forward to meeting you in person again in uh, Regina, and hopefully we can continue this conversation. Absolutely. We'll look forward to it. Thanks again, Chris. Now, if this episode sparked your interest, hit the subscribe button now. Stay in the loop with all our diverse content covering everything from municipal affairs, like you saw today, or in-depth conversations on the cross-border interviews, or even our eye-opening exploration on the decisions local governments make in the political trenches of local government at work. We are your go-to platform for comprehensive municipal coverage, committed to keeping you well-informed as well as engaged on the issues. Your support is the backbone of our growth and the maintenance of this top-notch content you have come to enjoy. If you can, consider backing the show. Every contribution, big or small, amplifies the depth and the breadth of our programming. Find the support page link on the Cross Border Interviews website today. Until next time, stay informed, stay engaged, and most importantly, and as always, just keep talking.